Hello guys from London, I am on my way to Euston station to catch a class 390 Pendolino from Euston all the way up to Crewe. Now Avanti West Coast reckon they can do this in exactly 1 hour and 30 minutes. Should we test this theory out? I think we should, come on! There's a lot of construction work going on around Euston for the new HS2 station etc. Uh, it's been like this for a while now. The familiar concourse was not particularly busy, and I've seen it rammed here in the past. Now it's pretty early for this train, and uh, whilst most people tend to hang around staring at the departure board waiting for their platform number to appear, and I always think it's worth a quick look on real-time trains uh, for this information. I'll link to that below, by the way. If I've got a platform number, and I tend to make my way down to it and beat the rush. Uh, bear in mind that they don't always get it right, so it's always worth checking the displays on the side of the train. Uh, but if it all goes to plan, you will be rewarded with the pick of the available seats. Uh, my train was the 1442 Manchester Piccadilly, uh, which called only at Crewe, Wilmslow and Stockport before reaching its destination at an arrival time expected at 1446. And here she is, 390112, uh, which as I've already said, I won't be stopping at all until it gets to Crewe. A bypass in Birmingham is a major factor here, as it actually takes the Litchfield Trent Valley line, branching off at Rugby. Because of that, it doesn't have to negotiate the slower line through Coventry, Birmingham, and Wolverhampton. And I don't know of any other train that will get to Crewe so quickly, do you? The total distance is going to be 157 track miles, so that should result in an average speed of around about 105 miles per hour. I was travelling in standard class today, which you can see is laid out with a mixture of table and airline style seating in a 2-2 configuration. Now it was still pretty quiet, so I thought I'd have a look at various seating arrangements so you can get a feel for the different types on offer. Now first of all, I tried a table seat in the priority seating zone. Now the seats are the same anyway, um, and they haven't changed since the Virgin days. A reasonably good padding with a retractable armrest between them. On the underside of the table is a conventional power socket, um, but also double USB connectivity, which is good to see. Uh, there is ample legroom in these seats, and the table is hinged at the aisle seat on both sides to allow for easier access egress for priority passengers. Uh, there's a blanking plate here, which I think from memory covers the old at seat train entertainment system. Now at the window uh, we have a pull down blind and reading lights for each side of the table. I then went and had a look at one of the airline style seats. Same seats uh, and they have a back seat pouch here with a reasonable legroom uh, beneath a solid plastic fold down table. And finally a standard table seat where the table is actually of a really good size, uh, probably the best I've seen actually. Um, you can see that opposite me in the centre of the carriage there is room for large luggage and quite a few people tend to use these trains for long distance travel uh, so yeah, I think provision for luggage is quite important and there's also a uh, good capacity overhead rack storage on both sides uh, Kotux are uh, provided above the window seats uh, where you will also find the digital reservation displays Anyway, let's start the clock. Uh, we're leaving Euston on time, a few seconds early actually, if anything. Uh, I'm going to leave the stopwatch running and we'll keep track of our progress at uh, various intervals along the route. But I'll tell you what, this train certainly wasn't hanging about. We were already hitting over 125 miles an hour while still in the suburbs of London. This was going to be a really fast run. I could feel it. Right, so going through Bletchley a bit earlier was the first time we'd really slowed down to around 90 miles an hour. 
and after 30 minutes, just after Milton Keynes actually, we were one minute late, believe it or not. Now, I think these Class 390 Pendolinos give such a smooth ride at speed that when you look up from your seat you can really see the train banking through the curves. Uh, not massive curves here but a bit further north on the west coast main line towards Scotland this is uh, really much more prominent but I think even here watching it really adds to that sense of speed. On a Watford Gap we're maintaining about 120 miles per hour and just look how much faster we are than the motorway traffic on the M1. tell you what, uh, we didn't slow down much going through rugby at all. Uh, this is where we branch off, by the way, at the Trent Valley Junction, and that bypasses the conurbations of Coventry, Birmingham and the Black Country. Uh, incidentally, price I paid for today's journey was £16.40, which I thought was pretty good for a Vanty West Coast. Now I purchased this about three weeks in advance. Uh, we're coming up to the hour mark now, uh, we power through Tamworth and as we leave we've made up a bit of time and we're actually half a minute early. Right, so between Stafford and Crew, I thought I'd better do a quick loo review before it's too late. Um, a fully accessible toilet with push button locking system in place. A big mirror opposite are reflecting the big red virgin looking balloon. An illuminated mirror here with some virgin esque writing below it. And integrated water, soap, and hand dryer, which unfortunately I couldn't get to work. Well, I had to use toilet tissue, which is not ideal really, uh, but there was a bin below. And a very posh baby changing facility here with straps and a hygienic paper towel dispenser. A nice touch, and if I'd have known that, I'd have used that to dry my hands. And the toilet is below with push button flush and a handle here, which can be lowered if you're sitting down. Emergency assistance, as you can see, next to the open closed buttons for the door. Yeah, nice and clean. A very quiet train today, so it probably hadn't had a lot of usage. I need to sort the hand dryer out though. Uh, I'm not a fan of drying my hand with toilet tissue, to be honest. Well, before heading back to my seat, here's a quick look at the shop, uh, which I didn't use today, but it's really good to know that they're open for business, isn't it? So on the outskirts of Crewe, and it was going to be really close to the target time here. I was trying to make another train that would take me back to Shrewsbury, hence my relocation at this point to the door. Uh, inevitably we slowed right down on approach to the station and I was relying on my other train being late. It wasn't. A quick glance at the stopwatch and we were just over the one and a half hour mark.
and we came to a halt. Stop the clock! And I hurried over the bridge, but yeah, I could already see that my train had departed from platform six. Now, they run about every hour down to Shrewsbury, so it was no big deal. I had a wander around Crew Station for a bit, and to be honest, there are worse places to be stuck than Crew. You know, there's always something going on. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, 58 seconds and a few milliseconds late in the end. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, that meant that I missed my connection to Shrewsbury, which wasn't really a connection because we weren't due to get into Crewe until 16.10, and my train left Crewe at 16.10, so it's not likely I was going to get it. Unfortunately, there's um, another hour now. I've got to wait around Crewe. Um, before getting the next one down to Shrewsbury. But yeah, I'm pretty impressed really with that ride up through the Trent Valley. Um, obviously bypassing Birmingham and the back country and all that makes a big difference in terms of speed. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I know it's pretty good. I'll definitely take it again. It's only about the connections for me. But if you're going up to Manchester, it's definitely an option, isn't it? It's much quicker than taking a flight, I would say. Um, getting to the airport and back from the airport city centre to city centre that's what you need isn't it so thanks for watching and until next time guys cheers for now